Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be taking you through my entire makeup brush collection. I have everything sitting in front of me. I already pulled out my favorite, so we'll definitely talk about all of those individually first. I also started to pull out some of my brushes that are older, they're falling apart, and I plan to declutter those. Even though I store all of my makeup brushes right on top of my vanity where I can see them, I have so many that it's gotten to the point where I sometimes have to fumble through and I can't find what I'm looking for. It's incredibly frustrating and it doesn't make sense, so it's time to organize. I haven't cleaned any of these brushes, you'll have to pardon me. I figure the best way to do it is to go through them first, get rid of the brushes that I'm going to declutter, and that way I only have to clean the keepers. It's been a couple months since I've done blue eyeshadow on camera, but I had some time when I was getting ready and I figured, why not? I've been bound and determined to conquer that blue eyeshadow palette from Charlotte Tilbury, which was giving me nothing but trouble, but I'm pretty pleased with the overall look today. It's a combination of a lot of things. I used the caviar sticks from Laura Mercier as my base. Then I went in with that blue eyeshadow palette from Charlotte. I also picked up Bronze Seduction because I can't seem to put it down and it was a lot of fun to play around with color today. I feel like I've been living in neutrals and pinks for such a long time that I'm sure it's shocking to see me wearing blue. I wanna begin by talking about some of my all-time favorite makeup brushes, starting with foundation. Here I have the Marc Jacobs Face One Blending Brush. Ever since this arrived in the mail, I don't think I've put it down once. <laughs> this has become my go-to brush for foundation. It's my current favorite. I cannot recommend this enough. It's so easy to use and it's an even distribution every single time, but it's so fast. It feels so soft. Not right now because it's dirty. <laughs> Usually it feels so soft. I love the density. You know, it's somewhat fluffy, but it's dense enough that it doesn't kind of drag and smear your foundation. You know, you don't see little brush hair strokes, little lines in your foundation whenever you apply. I picked this up on sale and now I am kicking myself for not getting another because the price was so good. I love the length of the handle. That's really the biggest difference between the face one and the face three. That and the density. This is a little bit more compact, whereas this one has a little bit of give to it but it is just so beautiful. Just the perfect foundation brush. I was shocked when I read some relatively negative reviews on the Marc Jacobs Beauty website, but it, they were kind of old and it was people saying that their brush was shedding and they must have changed them because I don't think I have lost a single hair from this brush. I haven't had it a long time, but I've been using and abusing it in that time and not a single hair. And I can't say that for well, actually, I think I can only say that from my three Marc Jacobs brushes. All of my other brushes that are great, they still shed hairs every once in a while, but not this one. Now, I used to love the Face 3, and I'm still somewhat surprised that this has surpassed this one as a favorite because this is so amazing as well. And before I had tried the Face 1, I swore by the Face 3. It's just a little bit shorter, a little bit more dense, it's still really fast and easy and it does fit nicely in the hand. For whatever reason, and I'm sure this comes down to nothing other than personal preference, but I do prefer the thinner, longer handle. It just feels a little bit better. I remember when I was looking at foundation brushes online, I was reading a ton of reviews, which is what I usually do when I'm in the market for something new. And I was on the Sephora website and I was just scrolling and I thought, this looks like what I'm looking for. Great reviews, picked it up, didn't think twice about it, and I never looked back because it is just so good. I also picked up the Face 2 to complete my set, my little trio, and I haven't used this brush just yet, but I'm sure I'm going to love it because it is the same high quality as the other brushes. The hairs are really nice. It almost has this beveled edge right here, but it's a little bit flat, still rounded on the top, I love everything about these brushes. I think they're really sleek and chic with the black and then the silver all black ferrule. They feel really good. They're weighted. They feel really substantial in the hand. I just can't wait to use this for anything. And I heard from you guys that you use this for foundation and then somebody else said they use it for powder. That did cross my mind. I thought maybe it would be really nice for powder on the T-zone or something. I don't know, I'm going to get creative and put this brush to good use. My favorite concealer brush at the moment is from Sigma. It's this F79. And before this one, I was using this F86 for years and years. 
This is the original. I've had this for such a long time. Still in really great shape and I use this whenever this one is filthy, which it rarely is because I like to keep it clean. I like them both. I like this one a little bit better. The F79 is a little bit shorter. It's more rounded, less tapered than this F86. So it just fits my face a little bit better. And it's a really decent price point. The Sigma brushes are not crazy expensive, but they're really great quality. You know, everybody has a different journey into makeup and journey into luxury makeup, but the Sigma brushes were my first professional brushes. I remember my now husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, got me this big Sigma brush kit when I first started getting into makeup. I was still working in broadcasting at the time, but I was watching makeup tutorials on YouTube and really trying to up my game and I got really excited. I was so happy to finally get my hands on these professional brushes. I still have a lot of those brushes today and when people ask me to recommend a starter kit or a brush set that isn't crazy expensive, I always lead them to Sigma. It's why, where I started. I still use some of the brushes. I I think they're great quality. I don't have any of the Sonia G brushes. I know those are kind of the standard when it comes to luxury brushes. I'm sure at some point I will dip my toe into that pond. It's all about priorities, you know, they're more expensive and I still have great brushes here that I can use so I haven't felt the need to go that route just yet. I always feel like I'm juggling to keep up with new makeup releases that I don't think about it that often. And I don't think you need to spend hundreds of dollars on great brushes to have beautiful makeup. It's an investment and I do think it's a great investment if that's something that's within your budget and that's what you'd like to do. Is it completely necessary? No, that's just my humble opinion. Here we go. I also have this little mini version. This is the P86. I'm guessing it's the Petite F86. So it looks like the shrunk down version of this one. This is really nice for whenever I finished my makeup. If I start to see a little bit of creasing right in the lines underneath my eye, which I usually do, I can go in with this brush and just kind of tap or I can lightly smudge around and pick up any excess product that way. I have a couple Bare Minerals brushes here that I absolutely love. This is the Seamless Shaping and Finish brush. I use this for powder. I also have the Diffused Highlighting brush. I used that for highlight. And then I also have the Smoothing Face. I'm gonna talk about that one in a second. I like this for powder because it's not huge. I have a couple giant powder brushes and I don't really like them. They're almost too big. I prefer this shape. I like a brush that's fluffy, sort of more rounded. This one is slightly tapered, so it works really well underneath the eyes. It reminds me a little bit of this old Chanel brush. I don't think this is available anymore. I'm currently using this for bronzer. I never really like to use this for powder. For the same reason, I don't really like to use these giant brushes. I just feel like it doesn't, it goes everywhere and it goes nowhere at the same time. And I do like this brush for bronzer. I wish it was still available. I know they have something that looks similar to this now, I believe. This is an old Sigma brush. I also like to use this for powder. In fact, I kind of go in between the two. If I had to choose one, I do prefer the Bare Minerals, but this Sigma powder brush is nice as well. I like the fact that it's tapered because you can go right in the inner corner right here. I have a couple highlighter brushes that look like this. It's nice because it's sort of fluffy, but it's long and tapered. It's not too dense. It's a little bit big for highlight, I'm sure for some people. I know it's popular now to have a more precise brush. Let's see, something more like this maybe to highlight smaller areas. But I like to go in with the big guy and I just highlight the entire cheek, I don't care. If I'm using my liquid bronzer from Bare Minerals and I am applying it on top of my foundation, I'll buff it out with this. It's just kind of perfect. It has two levels of hair and I think they are both synthetic. So it's not a true duo fiber brush. You know, it's not natural and synthetic mixed, but it just works perfectly. I think you could use this for foundation as well, but I just find that brushes this size with this kind of petite compact dome they're better for contour 
cream bronzer type of products, which is what I use this for as well. This is another one of my favorites. I kind of alternate between these two. This is the full coverage face brush from Bobbi Brown. When I worked at Nordstrom, I swear all of the beauty stylists swore by this brush. This was like the go-to premier foundation brush in the entire department. I guess that's where I fell in love with it and it is a great brush, but I prefer a bigger brush for foundation. This is so much faster than this. So again, I like to use this for cream bronzers, cream contour. You could do maybe like cream highlight, cream cheek, anything cream because it's synthetic. Another one of my favorite face brushes that is unfortunately no longer available from Chanel. This is the number seven foundation slash powder, which I like to use this for foundation on clients. I used to use this for just all sorts of things. I'll use this for a primer sometimes and it gives the most lightweight distribution of product. It's so pretty. The synthetic hairs and the natural hairs just help to balance everything out. It distributes the product, but then it picks up any excess. I wish they still had this. Now they have something similar, but both of the hairs are black and I don't think it's duo fiber. Again, I think it's just all synthetic. So I'm not sure it works quite the same way. I know MAC has a similar brush to this. So you can find a similar concept in other brands, just not from Chanel any longer. A similar looking brush is this one from Sigma. This is the Duo Fiber Powder Blush F15. I love this for cream cheeks. Anytime I'm using my NARS Liquid Orgasm Blush, I like to go in with this because there's something about these soft little hairs, it does not disrupt your foundation or any makeup underneath. So sometimes whenever I'm using my fingers, I'm like, oh look, it's perfect. It's not breaking up my makeup. And then I look close in the mirror or I look in a compact and I'm like, ah! When I go in with this brush, it truly does not disturb. So you can go in with liquids, creams, on top of powders, which I don't really recommend. You know, that is somewhat of a recipe for disaster, but if you have to do it, you have to do it. At least have a brush that will make it a little bit easier. It's just so soft. Anytime I want to apply a product as lightly as possible, I like a brush like this. These are amazing. My favorite powder blush brush is from Chanel, and this is the old version with the silver ferrule, but it's the same shape. It's just now all black. This is so perfect because I swear the shape is ideal. It just sits perfectly on the apples of your cheeks. And I love the density. I love the fact that it's somewhat flat. I mean, you could chisel out a cheekbone if you really wanted to with this brush. You can do a lot more with it than just blush, but it is ideal for blush. I just want to show you these quickly. I know I've shared before when I purchased them, but I store all of my makeup brushes in these giant glass jars. It's this really pretty hurricane glass. I bought these from Crate and Barrel several months ago and they were on sale. I think they were maybe $12, something like that. And they had different sizes. I should have picked up more. I should have just grabbed the whole lot because you can store anything in these and they just look really pretty. So I picked up three and it's still not quite enough, which is why I'm trying to downsize <laughs> in this video. I'm going to get rid of some of my older brushes. I balled up some tissue paper and I shoved it down at the bottom. That way the brushes stick up a little bit more before they would just slide right in and I would have to pick them up by the hairs. But I just think this is the most beautiful display. I was really proud of myself for this one. <laughs> Even though this might not be available, I'm sure you can find something similar. And I wouldn't even look at Crate and Barrel first. I think I just happened to be wandering around and I saw them on sale. But I would check places like Home Goods, TJ Maxx, um, Ross. Our Ross isn't that great, but our Home Goods, TJ Maxx is amazing. It's like a whole different dimension. You walk in there and it's like, what is this universe? So I would go to whatever store like that is near you and maybe search around. I bet you could find something similar for seven or eight dollars. Now let's talk about eye brushes. I know this is going to annoy some people to death, so apologies in advance, but I'm just not one of those people who has a specific brush for every millimeter on their face. I don't know all of the names. I don't have the G75 for here and the RX12 for this little corner right here and then all this spot. I swear it just tickles me that some people are so exact. It's like science. I love it. It's amazing, beautiful. But I'm just a little bit 
low maintenance and somewhat simple when it comes to eye brushes. Now, of course, it's all relative, isn't it? Because some people are gonna look at all of these brushes and think I'm crazy for having so many, but I don't think this is too much. So here's one of my favorite brushes. This is one brush that I definitely recommend to anybody, not necessarily this one. In fact, the name is scratched off. I've had it so long. This is an old Morphe brush. It looks like it's M431. So I, who knows if that is still available, but a good pencil brush is really nice to have. I also have a similar brush from Refer that is amazing. In all of my mess that I've created in front of me, I can't find it, I'm not gonna search for it, but a nice pencil brush is great for smudging out the lower lash line, imperative. I generally always say, especially for beginners, you need a fluffy and a flat. A good fluffy brush is going to be great for blending out the crease. It's even better if you own a couple fluffy brushes. So here are a few examples. Ooh, this is one that I've been using a lot lately. This is from Refer. This is their 16 brush. It's nice because it's tapered and I do love the Refer brushes. I wanna say most of them are sold out, but they still have their concept store open where you can go and select a brush. I think it's 50% off and you just have to share your feedback. I will link all of the information to refer brushes down in the description box. They've sent me all of these brushes, so full disclosure, I did not pay for any of these brushes. I would absolutely pay for these brushes. They're just really high quality. I also use the Sigma Tapered Blending Brush, the E35. This came from my original Sigma brush kit. It makes me so nostalgic that I don't even want to get rid of it, even though the paint is peeling. This is a rookie mistake. Do not let your brushes soak in water. I can't believe I did that, but the paint immediately started cracking. So it didn't take long for them to be destroyed. Whoops. I did order a backup. So this is another E35 tapered. This one looks like it's on its last legs. This one is a little bit more pristine, but I actually like the way the older one blends. Isn't that strange? They're supposed to be the same brush, but I swear they're different and I prefer the older one. I'm gonna keep all of my blending brushes even if they look destroyed, simply because it's always great to have a lot of blending brushes on hand. If you do any sort of look like this, it's nice to have a clean brush for you to go in and make sure everything is nice and soft. So here's a Sigma E25. It's kind of flat, it's a little bit more dense, it's not as fluffy, so you can pack a dark eyeshadow in the outer V and blend it out. Love that brush. I also have the 01. I think this is a rougher brush. I have the Chanel 19 eyeshadow blender. And I wanna say they have something similar to this. So the Chanel eyeshadow brushes are pretty nice. These I love. These are smaller, more precise brushes. This is the 14 and the 13 from Ruffer. I love these. I didn't know what I was missing until they sent me these and now I use them constantly because they're great for, again, kind of blending out color right here. But if you are doing a smoky eye, you don't necessarily wanna go in with a big fluffy brush to blend out the dark sh shadow. You wanna use something a little bit more precise. That way you can blend it, make it nice and soft, no harsh lines, but you don't have a full raccoon. And then here are a couple of my favorite flat brushes. This is the old concealer brush from Chanel. I can't even imagine trying to blend concealer with this brush. I guess it would be nice for spots on the face, but the under eye would be difficult. So this is the number 10. And I think they have something similar still. This is great for cream eyeshadow pigments and it has to be nice and flat because you can use that flat edge to kind of carve out the crease. So you can get really precise with this brush, pack on glitter, pack on anything, so nice. And a brush like this is going to be best for picking up some of those Pat McGrath shadows, you know, the ones that are nice with fingers. You can also use a brush like this. Oh, I almost forgot one of my favorites. It's hiding because it was in the bathroom. So this is the Definer Smudger Brush from Chanel. I love this brush, one of their double-sided and I wanna say it's still in the $30 range. It's really not that bad since it's double-sided. So you have this side, which is like a pencil brush, amazing. And then this side is a nice little precision brush. So this is great for the lid, but also you could use this to pack color in the outer V area. 
You could use this to carve out the crease. If you didn't want to go underneath the lower lash line, you can just do so much with this. They have another one that's fluffier. It's basically the fluffy and the flat. And they have another double-sided concealer brush as well. I love those double-sided brushes. I think I'm gonna have to pick up the other two versions. They're so convenient, great for travel. With those three brushes, the three double-sided, I mean, that's basically a travel kit right there. And then you would just need your foundation brush and then maybe a concealer brush or a powder brush. In my third jar here, I have a bunch of other face brushes. I have a lot of great refer brushes for the face that are nice, great quality. I do use those. I have a bunch of my Sigma brushes. I have some old Chanel brushes again that I don't think they make this anymore. Bare Minerals brushes. It's nice to have backups. That way I don't have to deep clean my brushes that often. But now it's time to get rid of some of these brushes because I just don't have enough room. Even with three giant jars, I can't fit them all in and I can never find what I'm looking for. I just went through all of my jars and I managed to pull out a couple brushes that can go. I need to go through again and be incredibly thorough and really cutthroat because I'm sure there are more brushes that could probably leave, but you know, we always fool ourselves into thinking that maybe one day we'll need it. Like there are several brushes that I haven't used in years, but they're in pretty good shape. And I just tell myself like, what if I do some really intricate makeup look and this is the one brush that I need and I got rid of it. So foolish, I know. So I am going to keep going through these probably when I'm done filming, but here are a couple that I am going to get rid of. This is from Kevin Aquan. This came with a foundation and I do like it, but I don't love it and I really don't need it. And I think it's covered in fuzz, dust, maybe old foundation, I don't know. I haven't had the foundation in a while. So this brush is looking old and crusty and it's not that soft. I have this brush from Sigma, the large concealer F65. I was looking at this like, what on earth is this even for? I've never used it. And this came with my original set. So I've had it for probably close to seven years, right? Seven, eight years. And I don't think I've used it a single time. Even still in my mind, I'm like, ooh, it's large concealer. Maybe I should be using this. No, I'm never gonna use this. It needs to go. That I'm getting rid of. I have the Sigma Powder Blush Brush, the F10. A couple of these brushes are from that original Sigma kit because it was my original set of makeup brushes, so it is about time. <laughs> it's a great sign that they've lasted this long, but it's starting to get really loose. And also, I don't know what got on this brush. It's been here for a long time, but there's some sort of glue or permanent fuzz within the little brush hair. So that's a good sign. If it's falling apart and it's covered in glue, glue fuzz, it's time to go. This Sigma Large Powder F20 brush, I never use it. This one is not falling apart, although the paint is cracked. Do not soak your brushes. <laughs> I never use this. It's covered in dust, not powder. And I don't think I will use this anytime soon. I have another big fluffy brush that was sent to me from Ruffer. The difference is incredible. This compared to this is night and day. This is so much softer. This feels like butter on the skin. And this is like, it feels pretty scratchy compared to this. So if I want a huge powder brush, I have one. I don't need two. I never use it to begin with. So I am gonna get rid of that. Let's see, I have two more Sigma brushes here. This is the small eyeliner E10. And then I have this small tapered blending brush. I used this so much but it's just falling apart. The paint is so chipped that I'm afraid I'm gonna poke myself whenever I pick this up. So it's about time to get rid of it. They are both falling apart. I have this really old brush. I think this is the oldest brush in my collection. And of course, now that I say that, I feel like, oh, maybe I should keep it. <laughs> it's the oldest brush. No, I'm going to force myself to get rid of it. This is a MAC 208. I used to use this for eyebrows, maybe in high school or college, a long time ago. It's now covered in what looks like blue eyeshadow. I don't know. It's been a while since I've touched it. It's grimy. It's gotta go. 
I have this old BH Cosmetics brush from God knows when. Haven't touched it, that's also gonna go. <sighs> I'm a little bit torn about this. I have this Fluid Powder Foundation brush. This is from Chanel and it's not falling apart. So I feel like I should keep it just in case, but I really don't like this brush. I might gift this to somebody. I'm sure I have some friends who could use a foundation brush though. I will clean this and I will make sure that it gets a really nice home. There's no room in the jars, so it's gotta go. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I certainly did. It was really helpful to go through everything, but hopefully you found it helpful as well. If there's one takeaway that I wish to share, it would be that it's nice to invest in great makeup brushes, but you certainly don't need to spend hundreds of dollars. You don't have to drop a huge chunk of change to enjoy your makeup or create beautiful makeup looks. If you would like to shop, anything that's available here will be linked down below in the description box, but that is always just for your convenience. But for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.